Mumbai, the financial capital of India, where most of the commercial trading across India occurs. Its culture is a blend of traditional festivals, food, music and theatres. This city offers a cosmopolitan, diverse and colourful lifestyle. Mumbai's history as a major trading centre has been providing people the opportunity for a better standard of living. Most people across the country believe it to be the city of dreams. Following this belief, many people flock to Mumbai in search of better employment which has also made it the capital of slums as well. About 60% of people stay in slums and shanties, which hardly have access to civic amenities. Most of the people have migrated from different states in India, mainly from Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and Orissa. Due to their lack of qualification and aptitude, these people only get menial jobs in various fields as contract labour. One of the jobs being ship breaking. Once a ship's life is over, the ship's owners sell them to ship breakers. They then decide in which country they want to break it. Their decision mainly comes from consideration of weak regulatory mechanisms, scant respect for the environment and cheap labour rates to gain more profit. China, Bangladesh, India, Pakistan and Turkey are such countries that break ships around the globe. This is the reason why recently the United Nations and most of the developed countries have taken up the issues of shipbreaking as one of their main agendas. Today, shipbreaking is considered as one of the most hazardous industries in the world. But at the same time, it provides employment to about 66,000 workers in India alone. Out of these, 60,000 work in Alang, Gujarat, which is the world's largest shipbreaking yard stretching over 10 kilometers length by joining two villages, Alang and Sosia, the twin villages as they call it. The remaining 6,000 work in a city like Mumbai. Even with such a huge workforce and the hazards involved to the workers, their conditions are as bad as the birds at these shipbreaking yards. Birds that have to make their nests using the cold metal wires, since they have no other choice left. A 
According to the laws, it is the responsibility of the employer to make sure every worker they hire is adequately paid, insured and provided for with their provident fund, gratuity and pension. Especially in a hazardous industry like shipbreaking, it is compulsory to provide essential personal protective equipment. सेफ्टी कुछ नहीं है, खाली बस हेलमेट हो, कभी साब लोग चेक करने आता है तो हेमले हेलमेट दे देता है लोग, सेफ्टी सूट कुछ नहीं देता है लोग, ये हाँ ये काम करो, अभी तो यही चल रहा है जे काम करो काम करो, खाली बस यही चल रहा है All of these workers who join the yards at Darukana, Mumbai, receive no training and knowledge about shipbreaking. Also, with the lack of knowledge about their rights, many of these people, including children, end up working at these yards. One of these child labourers is Lalan Prajapati. Now 62 years of age, he claims to have been working in this industry for more than 50 years. Ship breaking वो पहले मुलुक में था अनपढ़ है पढ़ा लिखा नहीं है कुछ हमारे भावना हुआ कि ये महंगाई बढ़ते जाएगी घर पर कुछ है नहीं कुछ रोजी के लिए तो करना ही पड़ेगा हमने वहाँ से आया यहाँ पर तो शाम को आया उधर से सुबह इधर काम पर लग गया तब से हम सिपाही में काम करने लगे ए बत्ती कटिंग का काम किए चार साल हेल्पर ही किया उसके बाद बत्ती चलाने लगे पहले ऊपर कटिंग करता था साल डेढ़ साल किया हूँ उसके बाद नीचे करता हूँ चोट लग गया तब से नीचे करता हूँ ऊपर नहीं जाता वो ऊपर काट रहा था तो ऊपर से पानी आया था जहाँ झीला नीचे आ गया नीचे आया तो यहाँ चोट लगा था ये है चोट इधर थोड़ा अंदर लगा था Lalan stays with his family near the yard as a slum dweller. He lives with his two kids and wife. His eldest son works as a mechanic, while the younger one is in second grade at a public school. Due to no public transportation available close to the yard, Lalan's wife has to take the younger son to school every day which is a humid 30 minutes walk from their home. Lalan at times has to go back to work hungry because of the rats helping themselves to the food that is kept for his lunch. The lack of electricity and no water supply makes it difficult for his family to sleep and cook food. Pani abhi saab, pani to abhi sab log khayte hain daru khane mein. Agar wo bhi samay se na bana to pani nahi milta hai. Ek din bharte hain, char din, paan din istemal karte hain, usme kiri par jate hain. हाँ कचरा भी हो जाता है अभी ये छोटा छोटा फुग्गा हम ही लोग ढोके करके ले आते हैं एक दिन भरते हैं दो तीन दिन चार दिन चलता है न पानी है न बाथरूम है फिर उधर है वो भी लेट हो जाता तो आधे एक घंटा लाइन में लग जाता है घंटे तो एक घंटा उधर लाइन लगाएगा तो खाना कब बनाएगा डिप्टी कब जाएगा फिर सुबह जागना है आज मान लीजिए जिसके पास परिवार हो तो खैर बन जाता है जिसके नहीं परिवार हो तो हर परेशानियाँ देख के ड्यूटी करना ही है राशन जो है अभी दारू खाने जो तीस रुपए किलो है बाहर में पच्चीस अठ चौबीस मिलता है बीस भी मिलता है अब ड्यूटी करें कि राशन के लिए जाए अब वो भी जाने पर 
हर चीज में नुकसान होता मालिक कहते हैं काम करेगा कि तू घूमेगा तो हर एक परेशानियां देखा जाता साहब Workers without families end up renting a small slum, sharing it with seven to ten workers who receive meagre wages, which have to be spent on food and clean water. At Darukana, there are very few water pumps available, but even these exclusive water pumps don't fail to disappoint the shipbreaking workers by providing them with the sea's salty water. Food brought from a market at Darukana only ends up eating into the lion's share of their income. In the end, something as simple as basic hygiene ends up as a luxury for the workers in the yard. For the female workers, the lack of sanitation and water makes working in these yards a nightmare. But they have no choice but to bear with it for the survival of their families. Some of these women have even lost their children to disease and infection. मजबूर है क्या करेगा? मजबूर के लिए तो आता काम करने के लिए। आज नहीं है। बच्चे लोग भी बराबर घर पे खाना नहीं देते इसके लिए बहू लोग भी ठीक नहीं है बराबर खाना गिना नहीं देता इसके लिए काम पे आता है दो बच्चे हैं बेटी का बेटी भी मर गया जवा भी मर गया दोनों मर गया इसलिए काम करना पड़ता है Most of these workers have worked in Mumbai for more than 20 years. But even then they cannot get any proof of identity in the occupational state they are working in. One of the most essential ID proofs is the ration card, which is given by the state government to every citizen to access subsidized food grains through the public distribution systems. Without a ration card or any proof of address, they can't even get a voter's ID, and they are deprived of their voting rights, and hence are ignored by the politicians. This happens solely due to the reason that the employer is not ready to provide any proper proof of them working in the yards, such as no written documents and no proof of contract between employer and employee. Having no medical support, accidents which occur to these workers in the yard end up in fatalities. While shooting for this documentary, our crew were made aware of the frequency of the accidents that occur in these yards. On the 9th of August 2012, at yard number 4, a 26-year-old Orissa-born worker, during lunch break, was chatting with his younger brother near a metal block unknown to the crane man who turned the crane. And this resulted in the 26-year-old being brutally crushed between the crane and the metal block. His younger brother was pulled away in the nick of time by another worker. But by the time the elder one was taken to the hospital, he was already declared dead.
After the incident, Mr. Vidyadarani, secretary of the employees' union, who went to the crematorium, found the body still not cremated. Due to the family not receiving the funds for cremation and compensation from the employer, the employer stalled the workers' family for quite some time. Seeing this, the union supported the collective decision of the workers to go on strike. The very next day, workers all across the yards withdrew their labour. After only one day had passed, at the end of it, the deceased workers' family received a compensation of 700,000 rupees. Mumbai Port Trust, Dock and General Employees Union and Alang Sasia Ship Recycling and General Workers Association are the first trade unions to organize shipbreaking workers both in Mumbai and in Gujarat since 2003 and 2005 respectively under the leadership of Dr. Shanti Patel. Since then, they have been organizing various awareness programs about occupational health and safety and providing basic amenities to these workers to the best of their ability. Today, Mumbai Port Trust, DOC and General Employees Union has conducted a workshop in collaboration with the Industrial Global Union Federation and ISCOS Italy. I had the opportunity to know the problem of the shipbreaking workers and also to visit the shipbreaking yards and see the working and living condition of the workers. So, um, together with uh, um, our staff in, in Italy, uh, I'm trying to uh, support uh, the bettering of the condition of the shipbreaking communities in uh, Mumbai and Elang. Taking into account the sole purpose of the workshop is to address the local issues of the shipbreaking workers and to support a community-based approach by spreading awareness and breaking the language barrier. Representatives from trade unions, industrial, NGOs, women's self-help groups and shipbreaking workers have attended a workshop where the workers discussed their problems and they came up with solutions. The very next day, Lalan and his other fellow workers who attended the workshop went to work with all proper safety equipment provided during the workshop and with the hope for a better future.
ये जो डिस्कट जो आज मीटिंग में हुआ है आज या कल इसको पूरा होगा ये नहीं है कि आज ही हो जाए उसको यूनियन हम या धनी को मिला कर के पार्टी को हम लोग आगे धीरे धीरे उसको बढ़ाते हैं छोटा सा वो बड़ा होता है धीरे धीरे वो जाते जाते चौथे मंदिर पचवें मंदिर अठवें मंदिर पहुँचता है ऐसे एक बैग नहीं जाता है आने को तो जल्दी आएगा लेकिन जाते समय लगता है इसलिए को सारे निष्कर्ष जो है ये पूरे उम्मीद है हमारा कि यूनियन ये पूरा करेगी